Hartley has completed her PhD degree from uh, Almadachi Biology and Biotechnology. Did you say in Germany? Germany. Yeah, okay. And British Heavy University, uh, <coughs> Germany, to 2007. <coughs> She's currently chief of a pharmaceutical science master degree program of the faculty of pharmacy, uh, University Gadia Mada in Russia. Her research interest in exploring the in Russia natural resources for anti infected Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Professor Fukuyama. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for letting me here. Uh, I would like to uh, present my, uh, the recent works of our uh, groups. So I'm, uh, like it, it was uh, introduced earlier, I am working in the uh, Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Gajah Mada, is in Indonesia. <coughs> So um, I work for the Center of Natural and Effective Research. So we work uh, basically uh, to uh, explore the uh, biodiversity of uh, Indonesian uh, plants for marine <coughs> organisms, from fungi, etc. And mostly we work on the, uh, uh, things related to uh, anti-infectious uh, disease. Uh, where in a uh, country like Indonesia, which is a tropical country, infectious disease is one of the major problems uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the health field. So one of the uh, uh, plants which we find very interesting is what's so-called uh, Myrmecodia tuberosa. Why is it so uh, interesting? Because it belongs to a family of Rubiaceae. Usually, uh, Rubiaceae plants, they are quite a bigger tree, uh, like a noni, for example. It's a quite bigger, but uh, this Rubiaceae, is, uh, uh, it's an epiphyte. It lives uh, on the bigger tree, as, um, and um, um, What's also interesting that uh, these plants has a, a symbiotic mutualism with the uh, can ants. So therefore, uh, the, it's also uh, known as a myrmecotropy. So there is a, a collaboration with ants. And uh, therefore, in Indonesia, we call it also ant nest plant or plan of uh, which provide nest for the ants so um, it's quite uh, why we are interested to study these plants because uh, we're thinking that uh, it's really uh, if this plants is could be explored more to uh, introduce uh, uh, scientifically the uh, from the ethnomedicine medicine use it will be ecological friendly why because it uh, lives on the bigger tree, it will not uh, need so much space for the uh, cultivation. And uh, therefore, um, this could also, because it's usually also uh, found in the forest, uh, we collect it from uh, West Papua, so it's, it's really popular here. So therefore, it's, um, it's quite uh, interesting to find out. There is no much uh, literature available for these plants already. It's uh, indigenous from the West Papua, and um, there are actually um, hundreds of related plants, of ant plants in, in uh, West Papua itself, but only three of them is uh, usually used as part of uh, uh, ethnomedicine uh, usage. Uh, one of them is uh, Myrmecodia tuberosa, the one that we will talk uh, later. And also the other is Myrmecodia pendens and Hypnophytum formicarum. We also studied of 
uh, three of them and um, we also find that uh, they are almost similar from the activity uh, yes it's, it's ranging uh, uh, of the, the which one is higher but um, in this talk I will uh, talk more about the Mimecodia tuberosa because we, we also find that that is a, uh, could be found abundantly in uh, West Papua so as you can see in the slides that uh, First, we uh, clean the, the, the tuberose part. So because this plant is, uh, uh, has an ant live with it, so the ants uh, infect the, the plants. So therefore, the plants uh, the, uh, becomes bigger in the upper part of the, the root. And this uh, bigger part uh, uh, will be the the nest for the ants where they can live there they uh, they will be uh, protected from the environment from the predator etc and um, and the, the 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 ants gives back as the uh, give their residue for the nutrient for the plants itself because the plant is quite uh, far away from the ground where they can uh, take soil for the nutrient so we uh, we could also expect that this plant is also has contributes uh, contributed to the uh, plant uh, chemical defense whatsoever. And we collect this tuberose uh, part and we slice it, um, and then we uh, dry it uh, using an oven. It's approximately about fifty degrees, and then we for, uh, proceed uh, further. Usually, uh, as traditional uses, they um, boil. Uh, they use uh, the the dried plants, and then they pour some boiling water, and then they drink it. And it's uh, it's usually used for uh, very wide uh, therapeutic uh, purposes. Uh, started from a very uh, from the preventive or for. Uh, uh, um, like um, uh, so for the mother uh, after giving birth so they recovered uh, easier or it's also could be used for the lactagogum but it's also could be used um, for uh, metabolic diseases and uh, as like uh, uric acid and, and so also for cancer it's uh, uh, it's already used usually like a tea, and uh, we we actually want to uh, uh, to study it further of these plants. We want to know whether it could also be used uh, in more uh, uh, in more uh, scientific way. So. Uh, because in Indonesia we we have what's so called phytopharmaca. With this phytopharmaca, uh, we have to do a certain uh, uh, preclinical and clinical studies uh, before this uh, product can be uh, uh, prescribed by physician. And therefore, this as uh, um, we we have already made some research on these plants. Uh, because of this huge uh, uh, wide therapeutic value, we want to know whether actually this plant has something to do with the immune stimulatory uh, effect. We uh, first screen for the plants and also for the others for the in vitro test. And it's already known that the effective dose is uh, a concentration is 50 microgram per milliliter. Uh, we test it for the uh, lymphocyte of uh, mice and also for the uh, macrophage. And then uh, we uh, go further for the in vivo test by using uh, spractoli uh, uh, mice. And uh, we uh, evaluate for the lymphocyte and macrophage. Uh, profile and we saw that the effective dose is around 24.24 milligram per kilogram body weight. And we also have a study for the toxicity assays which has uh, found out that this quite uh, uh, no uh, toxicity has been observed up to uh, 
eight hundred milligram per kilogram body weight uh, that we uh, subjected to the uh, rats. And then we also have the antimicrobial activity tested for screening, and it's also found that it's quite uh, um, effective toward uh, Candida albicans, uh, aureus, and E. coli. Uh, therefore, we also want to uh, study further whether this plant is also could be used to overcome the infection in the condition of uh, immune, uh, immune suppressed diseases. So, we uh, from other uh, real, uh, closest, re closely related plants uh, from the Hitno. Formicarum, we have already studied that the, the plants are uh, quite uh, potential to be developed as uh, biofilm inhibitors and also as a, some uh, 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 quorum sensing related pathogenicity of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So therefore, in, uh, we also want to know whether this uh, mycobacterium uh, uh, sorry, uh, Myrmecodia tuberosa is uh, also effective against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. As we know that um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is uh, an opportuni opportunistic pathogenic microbe uh, which uh, in the normal condition in a good uh, immune system it will not uh, harm anybody. But then in, in uh, immune compromised uh, patient, this could uh, cause uh, problems. For example, like in the cyst, uh, as will uh, as the cystic fibrosis. Uh, for example, because they can form a biofilm, and then with this biofilm, they can make a, a recurrent infection because uh, they will be uh, less susceptible with the uh, available uh, antibiotics. So uh, therefore, it will be very, uh, we, we found that it could be very interesting if this plant also has an activity toward this uh, uh, biofilm and other quorum sensing related pathogenicity of Pseudomonas aeruginosa uh, uh, as side by side with the uh, immunostimulatory activity. Uh, as quorum sensing related pathogenicity can also uh, not only to uh, biofilm activity but also for the production of uh, toxin, for example, biocyanin and bioverdin, and also for the motility of the uh, of the mi microbes. So therefore, we also study for uh, three of them uh, in this um, work. So we want to evaluate the ability of the extract and fraction to antagonize cell-to-cell -cell communication and in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. For sample preparation, we first do the delipidation uh, process uh, by using a petroleum ether. And then the, the, the residue, we uh, do the extraction with methanol and then Afterward, we do more about the liquid liquid partition by using hexane and methanol uh, 80%. And then, uh, after evaporates methanol, the, the uh, uh, aqueous part, we uh, further partition with uh, ethyl acetate. Uh, and from the screening uh, activity of the crude extract and fraction, we have already found out that the uh, ethyl acetate fraction and water fraction shows the highest activities as uh, biofilm formation inhibitors toward Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, but in case of water fraction, the growth inhibition is uh, much less in comparison with ethyl acetate fraction. And consider that in previous studies for the immunomodulatory that the ethyl acetate fraction is the active fraction. So therefore, we also want to study further about the ethyl acetate fraction. It has uh, ability to inhibit the planktonic growth of the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It's because that uh, we have already uh, searched for literature that the, uh, if the uh, an agent is uh, act as the anti-infective towards the uh, 
the planktonic growth, it could uh, also um, uh, induce the resistance to the antibiotics. But in case of the biofilm formation is inhibited, so therefore the the uh, microbe will be uh, less uh, will with have no communication to each other, so they cannot form a biofilm, they cannot exert the uh, toxin production, they cannot do the motility, and therefore they could be easily eased by the immune uh, body immune system. So we have already, uh, we want to know also whether this also could be effective against Sapirpos for uh, aureus because this also something related uh, with uh, usually cause biofilm problems uh, in, uh, uh, in a patient. But we found out that <laughs> the ethyl acid fraction uh, show the, uh, didn't show any biofilm formation inhibition but more on the growth inhibition of the uh, back, uh, bacteria, but uh, in other case, hexane fraction and water fraction almost show almost the same activity. Um, and then we have uh, tried to find out whether this uh, ethyl acetate fraction and hexane fraction also has an activity as the inhibitor in uh, one of the quorum sensing related. Uh, pathogenicity, which is the production of peyoverdin uh, pigment. We want, uh, so we do uh, almost like the normal diffusion test on the centrimid ag uh, agar. Centrimid agar is a specific uh, uh, agar for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, where this bacteria can produce peyoverdin and peyocyanin, so we can see whether the uh, the production of the pigment is inhibited in some way uh, by the extract that we use or not. So in this case, we found out that uh, both the ethyl acetate fraction and hexane fraction, but not the other fraction, shows uh, the inhibition of the um, uh, pigment formation. But the streptomycin, for example, because it's an uh, as we use as a uh, positive control, it shows only the clear inhibition zone, which shows that it only has the uh, anti uh, inhibition on the growth. But uh, we cannot see whether it also has the uh, activity toward the uh, bioverdin formation inhibition. And we also done the anti-motility uh, activity by uh, focusing on three uh, uh, motility, which is uh, usually uh, related to the virulence of uh, the uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The first one is for the swimming activity. Uh, not only human doing the swimming actually. So the swarming activity and also for the twitching activity. Actually the, the, the experiment is quite simple. So you only uh, pull, uh, use the uh, toothpick, the sterile toothpick and put the, the microbes on the center of the agar and you can uh, incubate for the 30, uh, 7 degrees, uh, and then the next day we will see how far that the microbes is gone from the one uh, the place that you uh, uh, put it in the first place. Uh, as you can see, but the, for the negative control, that it could uh, uh, go very far, very uh, wide. The uh, the diameters, but in the case of the, you put some agent that could inhibit the motility, then it uh, will be so much reduced. And uh, we have already seen that the, the ethyl acetate fraction, again, is uh, the most uh, active fraction, uh, with ha show by the highest inhibitory uh, uh, percentage. Uh, in comparison to negative control, it's about uh, in the swimming activity, it's 83.56, uh, and the swarming activity is 65.60, uh, uh, 
nine, and uh, for the twitching activity is about seventy percent point ninety, and this is also has uh, evaluate uh, as is significant in uh, uh, statistically. And uh, we have already uh, from this we can also suggest that this uh, ethyl acetyl fraction is the one that has the highest uh, activity as uh, and it could also be uh, studied further for the um, quorum setting related pathogenicity. So we further study for the antimotility to the swimming activity. We see that it's. Uh, also refer to uh, quite uh, uh, dependent uh, 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 concentration uh, activity uh, profile uh, with the higher concentration, and then also for the swimming swarming activity. But uh, for the uh, twitching activity, we didn't go for further experiment. And for the discussion, we also want to highlight that the based on our previous studies on the immunomodulatory activity, but, but uh, that the ethyl acetate fraction is the one that shows the highest uh, activity and towards lymphocyte and macrophag uh, optimized. So it's it's really interesting to go further for the ethyl acetate fraction and use it as, and maybe they follow it further for our phytopharmaca. And we also have comparison for the phytochemical screening. We have found out that uh, we only do it for the TLC. Uh, uh, we have found that it's as uh, phenolics, flavonoids, it's saponin, and alkaloids. And uh, in the ethyl acetate fraction, at first we would also like to see whether there is a, uh, we want to know which, what, which is uh, the highest potency from the ethyl acetate fraction. But we didn't. Uh, pro we did, we failed to give a positive result on the TLC by autography for uh, for the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. But it was positive toward uh, Staphylococcus aureus. Um, so we um, could also expect that they, that one is also could be uh, uh, because there is a separate compounds which also has the activity to to work together uh, to give the to extra the the uh, activity or it could also some problem with the the diffusion technique um, it's uh, this one is uh, one uh, uh, based on the stable corpus activity uh, of our activity we have already isolated uh, a compound but it's unfortunately it's very minor compound we have uh, difficulties in isolating or in separating uh, in with these plants because it's uh, very uh, high in polyphenolic contents. So it's really uh, uh, difficult to to be able to uh, to isolate something uh, with uh, uh, in a higher amount. So, but we're still working on it, and hopefully in the next. Uh, 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 in the next near future, it will be uh, finished soon. So we also study what does the end residue play a role. We haven't studied for the Mycobacterium tubercul uh, to, uh, uh, sorry, Mycobacterium tuberosa, but we have already studied for other uh, end plants, Inovitum formicarum, which also has a similar activity and similar profile. It has. Uh, we have already studied for the activity of the uh, ant residue, the plants without ant residue, and the plant with ant residue. We have found out that there's no significant difference on the activity nor the phytochemical contents of the plants. So we could still hope that this uh, this the the ant plants it doesn't has a, a role in the activity. So as a concluding remarks, I would say that the ethyl acid attraction is a potential anti-infective against Pseudomonas aeruginosa through inhibition of the micropathogenicity. And as an acknowledgement, I would like to uh, uh, present the higher appreciation to uh, the Indonesian Directorate of Higher Education and for the Gajah Mada University for the research uh, funding and also for the travel allowance. Thank you very much.